Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Quarantine Bunker Studio. I am your man in Japan, Jay Contra, and we are back at another showcase showdown of the Hard Off in Hisayama, Fukuoka Prefecture. I was there a few months ago visiting my girlfriend, helping her move out of her apartment, and took a long video of the showcase. And this is, as always, what we do is just do an in-depth look at all the games, and I try and give what commentary that I can. This is a continuation of the previous video where we looked at Super Famicom, Famicom, and Sega Saturn, and Sega Dreamcast games. We're going to be starting off with N64. I think we'll also look at some GameCube games. You can see it uh, over on the left. So without further ado, let's hit play and see... Oh, oh, excuse me. Actually, no. Uh, forgot where I started this. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Um, we've got some of the, I guess... More uncommon, I will say, N64 games. So if you look on the far left, we've got Neon Genesis Evangelion. This is a very interesting, pretty fun game, pretty fun adaptation. Uh, this was exclusive only to Japan. The thing about it is it's somewhat uncommon. It's actually started to become one of the more expensive N64 games to where this loose copy for $25 is actually not a bad price. And if you didn't watch the previous video, I will say that this hard off is in general, not always, but in general more expensive than most other places. And it's particularly expensive considering that it's in the middle of nowhere Japan. Prices should not be this high. But 25 for Neon Genesis Evangelion is okay. Next to it, at what might be ridiculous, is Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. I actually had a hell of a time finding this game to complete my collection, but even at... Um, this is actually one of the few games that I bought at Super Potato, which I generally wouldn't recommend you buying games at Super Potato because they're so expensive. But it's very difficult to find, but $30 seems a bit pricey, but I haven't been in the N64 collecting scene for a while, so I can't tell you what the real price on it is. We've also got the fourth Puyo Puyo, Puyo Puyon, going for $22. It's not bad. And we've also got Sheeran the Wanderer going for $20, which is what I would pay for it complete. But that was also a couple years ago, so I'm not, I'm not sure. But Sheeran the Wanderer is an absolutely fantastic uh, roguelike dungeon explorer. I highly recommend it, and um, I'm looking to get the other games in this series. But there's only this one that was released it, it, for the N64. Beneath that, we've got Tetris 64 by Seda, which is $25. I should note, and I've said this in my last one, and I'll just keep repeating it for anyone who's new, but when you go into a hard off, these are the new stickers that they have. You see the big price on the top of the sticker. That is the price you will pay at the register. That is the price with tax included. The smaller text, the smaller price, that is the price before tax. Japan has a 10% sales tax. Now, if you are visiting Japan and you have a tourist visa and you are carrying your passport with you, at a lot of these shops, I don't believe that hard off will do it, but maybe there's some that are that will you can do tax-free shopping. This will save you 10%, often on the display price. So you also have to keep in mind that the display price does not necessarily include tax. So keep that in the back of your head. And also at the time of filming, I think the yen is about 108 yen to the dollar. I often just do $1 for 100 yen, so uh, unless it's like a super expensive game, just because I, I don't have the brain capacity for all that. Other games here, we've got the Namco um, on the top. We've got the Clamshell Famicom. Um, what is it? Wagon, Wagon Land, that's going for $35, but it does not have the manual. It's got a little note on the bottom um, of the label. Um, then we've also got another a Sunsoft game that's going for $18, but it does not have the manual as well. There's a lot of things here that have, um, I guess have just stuck in this showcase because they don't have the manual and people just don't want it. The collectors don't want it. So we've got a lot of titles here, a big, big showcase. So we have the one Neo Geo CD game that we have complete is, oh, I wanna say, yeah, that's um, Machine Samurai Spirits. That's, I want to say, the second Samurai Spirits, I think. That's going for 3,000 yen, $30. And the note says that it has a little scratch on the disc. Um, it also has the OB, the spine card, um, which is a, which every 
CD-based game should have. If it doesn't have it, that is points. That's points off the price, uh, as it were. You've also got R-Type 2. Um, I believe, yeah, that's for the PC Engine. That is going for $25. Uh, we have a game for, the, I think, the Famicom that I don't recognize. We have another, what I think is another PC Engine game going for 5000 yen, uh, $50, um, but I don't recognize it. We've got Super Star Soldier going for, is that $25? Yeah, I wouldn't pay much, much more for that for Super Star Soldier. Uh, we've got Ninja Gaiden on the bottom left. We've got Shinobi going for 2000 We also have, uh, I can't tell what that game is. is that, I can't believe that's a Jackie Chan game. I don't know if Jackie Chan had a PC Engine game. Uh, for in in Japan, I'm not sure about that. And then we also have Gradius going for two thousand yen. We've got Bomberman going for seventy dollars. Oh, actually, um, yeah. So looking at the text here, it is a B card. It is not a Who card. I want to say B cards. Yeah, it's for the MSX. That's crazy. So we've got two MSX games here that are in the shape of Who cards. We've got Adventure Island and Bomberman. Both are priced at seventy dollars. I don't know if that's worth paying, but that's not something I've ever seen before, actually. We're just going to move along here, see what is down here. Oh, we get Alps. What, what a smart boy I was uh, zooming in on these games. Uh, we've got on the bottom left, we've got War of the Dead for... I can't see the label on that. It might. I'm assuming it's a PC Engine game, a PC Engine CD game that's going for 25. We've got Newtopia going for 25 as well, and we also have Sonic CD going for 25. Oh, and we've also got um, the four hidden treasures for the Game Gear going for 15 dollars. Okay, what else have we got in the showcase? Looks like we're going to. Look at some, oh, good, all right, yeah, getting getting in close. Wow, for $100, we've got YY World. Looks like it's for the Famicom, judging by the shape of the box. We've got a Pro Action Replay. Is that for the Game Boy? That's going for $40. We've got a Konami game that I can't read that's going for $25. We've got Rhythm Heaven Loose going for $27, or no, $20, excuse me. $20 is what I would pay for it uh, complete anywhere else. What else have we got here? We've got, ooh, the Game Boy Advance version of Rockman and Forte going for $20 and Game Boy Wars. So this is the, so, okay, I absolutely love this game. This is, um, this is Advance Wars, but in Japan, um, Advance Wars was released as Advance Wars 1 and 2. It is both games on the same cartridge. $20 loose isn't bad. If it was complete, I would expect it. I wouldn't pay more than $50 or $55. Uh, for Advance Wars. And then there is a Band Presto game that is $20 that I, I, I don't know about. We've also got some more, oh, some very interesting Game Boy games, Game Boy Advance games. Uh, we've got an Atlas game going for a, for a, sorry, for $10 on the bottom right. We've got a Fire Emblem game on the bottom left. I cannot tell you which one this is because I have these, but I haven't played them yet. That's going for $25. That's around, they've gotten a little bit pricier these days. Complete in box can be anywhere from $30 to $40. We've also got Rockman and Exe 6. Um, we've then got a TDK game going for $20. And Custom Robo, I didn't know Custom Robo came out for the Game Boy Advance, but here it's going for $10 loose. Moving right along to the top, let's check out some GameCube games. Now, what I should say is there isn't any, there's a couple of $100 plus GameCube games. The GameCube still hasn't shot up in price yet, but again, it is 2020. Who knows what's going to happen to these systems? We've got, um, we've got Disney, something I can't read from the glare, Basketball, that is going for $30. Giftopia, $25. We've got Flintstones, the uh, the Rescue of Dino and Hoppy going for a cool $350. Oh, boy. Wow, that's not Rescue a Dinosaur Peak, is it? No, I'm sorry. I don't know if Japan got the Dinosaur Peak game. Again, that's one of the really expensive... Um, 
NES games. I don't know if that got put out for the Famicom as well. We've got a copy of Bomberman. Is that Generation? Uh, I can't tell from the text. It's a Bomberman game for the GameCube that's going for $30. It has a scratch on the disc. Uh, we have Ultimate Spider-Man going for $20. Lord of the Rings and the Return of the King for $20. Don't know why that's in the showcase. I guess this is the GameCube showcase is $20 and $30 games. That's fantastic. Uh, GameCube is really, this is really still a great time to get into GameCube collecting. Uh, we've got Star Fox Assault for $20. When I first came to Japan, that was like a $50 game. It's crazy to me how actually the GameCube... Some GameCube games have gone down in price, which is astounding to me. Uh, we've got Momotaru Dentetsu on the bottom left going for $30 with a scratch on the disc and some damage to the box. And we've got another copy of Star Fox Assault, but this one's going for $25. And I don't see any appreciable difference between the two copies. Don't know what happened. Moving right along, hopefully we mosey on over to those Game Boy Advance games. And yes, in fact we do. Wow, okay, we've got some really, really interesting titles here. So on the top right, there is um, a powerful Pro Yaku Pocket. Is that 1 and 2 or is that 12? I can't tell from the glare, but it's going for $30. On the top left, the crown jewel of this Game Boy Advance collection is... Metal Slug Advance going for $400. Well, I guess, well, $360 depending on the tax and the exchange rate. This is one of those games that the Game Boy Advance got a lot of cool games for very familiar series. Uh, Metal Slug, Pocky and Rocky, a couple of other games got Game Boy Advance games and they had low print runs and they're part of popular series. So they are very, very expensive now. The Game Boy Advance games have really started climbing up in value within the last couple of years. So it's no surprise to see this at $400. If I was in Tokyo, I would spend $350 on it. Um, what have we got? Power Power Pro Yaku Dash going for $30. Rockman and Exe 6 going for $40. Two copies of that. We've also got a Fire Emblem game that I can't remember the English name of going for $30. That's actually not a terrible price. Um, if I didn't have it, I, that I would pay that. We've also got Final Fantasy VI Advance going for $30. That's just a couple of dollars more if you're really looking for it. That wouldn't, This wouldn't be a bad time to buy. We've also got a couple of games beneath it. We've got Final Fantasy V Advance going for $32. A um, little bit expensive, maybe 10% more than I would pay. We've got Rockman and Forte. I was about to say complete, but we've got it with the box. However, it has some water damage and it does not have the manual and it is still going for a cool $30. We then have Super Robot Wars J. I think that's what that says. That's going for $20. We've got a, comp a complete inbox copy of Rhythm Heaven going for $20. But what was the other one going for? Was it, I thought the, were they $10 or were they $20 for the loose copies? That's, that's interesting. Uh, let's see, then we've got Kawa no Nushitsuri 3, that's going for $40. We've got um, Geist going for $35, uh, a game I don't recognize, a 1-4 to four player person RPG going for $30. And we also have Tomato Adventure going for $30, that looks fun. We've also got a Dragon Ball game going for $25, but it looks like it does not have the manual. I wonder what the price would be for the manual. Um, you know, you don't often see manuals f for sale by themselves outside of Akihabara, but they do exist. And oftentimes the price differential, it depends on, on sort of the, the rarity of the game, but common games, there tends not to be that big of a difference in price from having a complete game versus a game in the box that's missing the manual. So here we've got, we've got a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 going for 35. We have Clock Tower for the Wonder Swan by Nagzat? Wow, that's interesting. I should have bought this. $30? That's, that's a game. That's an interesting, interesting game. Uh, we've got Metroid 2, The Return of Samus going for $50. That's a bit pricey. Right. Maybe $20, $30. But then again, I was, I was buying this stuff before the portable prices skyrocketed. So I actually don't know what the value on that's going to be now. 
Uh, we've got game I don't recognize to the right. We've got Pokemon Yellow. These, you know, for as expensive as this shop has been, the Pokemon games here are absolutely right on point. This, these are the prices you should be paying for Pokemon games in Japan because we've got Pokemon Yellow going for $20. You can, hiding underneath that, we've got Pokemon Silver also going for $20. It's a really good price. On the left, we've got Pokemon Blue, which again, if, um, if you didn't know, in Japan, we got Pokemon Red and Green first and Pokemon Blue was then released later and it has all of the updated sprites that got released in America. Pokemon Red and Green actually have different sprites for all of the Pokemon. Pokemon Blue in Japan is the one that has the sprites that you and I are more familiar with. We've also got, look at this, they've got almost all of the games, the only one they're missing is Red, um, you know, from the, from the OG, um, OG2 gens. We've got Metarot 5 going for $35. Pokemon Crystal for $20. This is actually the, the shop that I bought my copy of Pokemon Crystal from, and it actually had a replaced battery. Now, Hard Off, I think, does guarantee its games for about a month, and I believe that includes the save battery, but I don't know if they're replacing save batteries themselves. So that's something you need to look out for. They've also got Pokemon Gold in decent shape going for $20, and Pokemon Green for $30. Green at 30, that's a mm, that's not bad. It's not terrible. I remember that's I remember when I first came to Japan, I bought green and red from Super Potato for like $30, and that was expensive at the time. Am I going to zoom in on these games down here? Fantastic. Yes. Okay. So before I move away, we've got, uh, it's that like silly Castlevania. Uh, it's like, I can't remember what it's called, uh, but it's going for $40. We've got the second Castle, um, it's, what is it? Castlevania Legends 2. I don't know what the English uh, title is called, but it's going for $35. Complete in box, Castlevania mobile games are incredibly expensive. I just bought Circle of the Moon for $80, and that was a good price. Uh, we've also got Rockman World 2 going for $35. The original Rockman World going for $30. Rockman World 5 is going for $25, as well as a Kunio Kun game going for $20. Um, Turtles 3, it apparently has some, I think it's got some damage to the back of it, going for 25. Let's see, oh, how smart of me. I can't believe, why did I, do, why did I zoom in on some games and not others? Your guess is as good as mine. I get a lot better about this later. I filmed some more videos after this. Whoa, 30, oh man, I should have bought this. Okay, so on the bottom right, we've got, oh, I can't remember, it was the last... Uh, Castlevania game that came out for the original Game Boy. It is priced here at $35. I've seen it go complete in box in Akihabara for about $120. That's a pill that I really don't want to swallow, but I freaking love Castlevania, so one of these days I'll get it. Uh, we've also got Metarot 4 going for $25. Uh, we've got, um, let's see, Kairu no Tame ni. Is that Kagami or no? That's Bell. We ring the bell for Kaidu. Uh, that's $25. I don't know. I do not know much about the Game Boy, so I'm sorry if I can't be um, that much more help on this. So, ooh, wait, this is an interesting diversity uh, of, of mobile games. We've got Streets of Rage 2, Bare Knuckle 2 for the Game Gear going for $20. We also have Terminator 2 going for $35. And we've got um, more Darien going for $40. We also have a Samurai game going for $25. Beneath that, we've got Metroid for the Famicom Disk System. This is the original Metroid release. In Japan, we did not get a, a cartridge-based Metroid, unfortunately, because so this is the only way you can play Metroid in Japanese for the originally. Uh, it's going for $35. It's actually not bad. I've seen it go for way more. Uh, and then we've got, I want to say, Oracle of Seasons, because Oracle of Ages is blue. Oracle of Seasons going for $20. I want to say you can get it cheaper in the box in other places, uh, but don't quote me on that. I haven't looked at it. It's something I don't know if I have. I need to get that if I don't. We've got uh, Chop Lifter 2. I want to say that's Chop Lifter. Uh, that's going for $25. Then we also have a Mario game for the... Game Boy Color, I've never seen this before, going for $20. And then we also have on the very bottom left, we've got the Game Boy Advance Famicom version release for the game. Yeah, so 
This was part of a series of original Famicom games that got ported to the Game Boy Advance, I want to say in the early 2000s. And so those generally range from about $15 to $30. Here we've got Donkey Kong going for $15. I actually don't know what the port quality on these is like. I really want to get the Castlevania one. And I Did they do that for Metroid? You know, I hope they did. I would love to be able to play Metroid in Japanese and not have to use the disc system. Not saying anything against the disc system. It's just that last time I've tried to play Zelda 2, the my belt that I replaced kept falling off. So it was a real pain. We've got Maniac Mansion going for 35 for the Famicom. We've also got um, ooh, a $45. Let's see. Almana going for $45. We've got, oh, speak of the devil, there is um, Zelda 2 going for $20. And then we have um, Parutena no, the Bell of Parutena. Uh, I, is that Kid Icarus? Is that what they called it in Japanese? So that's going for $20. And then we also have a copy of Doraemon going for $40 from Hudson Soft. Here are some MSX games if you're interested. We've got Acho, the what is that? The Holy Fist of Acho uh, for the MSX. That's going for $30. We've got Mystery Game on the right is $45. I don't know what that is. Is that Mark III? Is this Mark III stuff? Oh, sorry, another MSX game. Um, we've got The Goonies going for $25. We then have, yeah, Mark III games. Um, we've got... Yeah, I don't know what those two games are, but they're going for $25, 20 and $25 from the right to the left. What else are we looking at? We've got um, Zaxxon going for $30 and a game by Dextersoft going for $35. MSX, I'm actually really surprised to see some MSX games here because you just don't you don't often see it in the countryside. You'll see it when you go to the hard offs around Tokyo and in the sort of the, the population centers, but not, not in this one, not in a rural place. We've got, man, all these copies of Terminator 2. Um, here we've got one for the Mega Drive going for $60. We have Lagrange Point going for $20 by Konami. We have what looks like... Did Gradius come out for the Mega Drive? Is that not a Famicom game? Going for $20. We also have Samurai Spirits. What I want to say is, yeah, that's yeah, that's the, the Mega Drive version going for $20. And another um, a mystery uh, Mega Drive game going for $20 uh, that I don't recognize. We've got Castlevania 3 going for $45. God, it, it, I mean, yeah, it is the best Castlevania game for the Famicom. $45. Yeah, I wish it was cheaper. Here we go. Some Mega Drive games in the box. We've got Thunder Force 4 going for $70. Is it that expensive now? Okay. And then we've got Turbo Outrun going for $50. Now, yeah, the Mega Mega Drive games, they got really expensive three or four years ago, I want to say. And ever since then, they've just really, really held their price. Okay, so that's actually it. Um, I've run out of video now. So this is, that's it for the showcase. But I have filmed some more videos within this particular hard off. We're going to go look at sort of like the rig, the more common games that they have on the shelves. We'll look at the consoles. So check out in the next couple of weeks. I'll be putting out more videos where we go in depth into the hard off. We talk about prices. We talk about availability. We talk about reading the stickers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're liking the newish format. I think I figured out some of the technical kinks. So for now, I have been your man in Japan, Jay Contra, saying thanks for watching, see you next time, and mahalo.